All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining Connecticut College Athletics for our virtual junior day. My name is Joe Giordano, class of 2017, an assistant coach of men's ice hockey. The goal with these sessions is to give you as much insight on Connecticut College as possible. You will have time to ask questions during sessions over the next two days, but I encourage everyone to write down any questions they may have to follow up with the coaches of your particular sport. As an alum of Connecticut College, I hold this institution in my experience as a student athlete and now a coach near and dear to my heart. And I hope that you all take this opportunity to learn as much about Connecticut College as possible and maybe someday have a similar experience as I have had over my last eight years here. With that being said, I'd like to jump into the coaches panel this morning. First with us, we have coach Kristen Steele. Coach Steele is in her 20th season as the head women's ice hockey coach at Connecticut College. Under her direction, the Camels have developed into a perennial contender in the NESCAC and have been ranked among the top 10 programs in the country. Coach Steele was recognized as NESCAC and New England Hockey Writers Coach of the Year in 2014-15. And since the 2014-15 season, the Camels have boasted an 84, 51, and 21 record during what has been the program's most successful span in school history. A native of Gill, Massachusetts, Coach Steele graduated from the University of Maine in 94. She was a four-year letter winner, three-time captain, and an all-AWCHA first team selection as a defender on the ice for the Black Bears. And she also earned all North Atlantic Conference second team accolades as a member of the softball team in 1993. Prior to her arrival at Connecticut College, Coach Steele spent three seasons as the assistant coach of women's ice hockey at Niagara University and helped build the Purple Eagles into a top 10 Division I program. She began her collegiate coaching career in 97 as an assistant for the women's ice hockey program at Colgate University. And before her time at Colgate, Coach Steele spent three seasons at Northfield Mount Hermon her alma mater in Massachusetts. She served as the head coach of the varsity ice hockey team there in 1996, and was also an assistant for the soccer and softball programs while teaching environmental science, environmental studies and biology. Coach Steele, thanks for being with us this morning. Next up, we have Norm Riker. Coach Riker was named head women's coach at Connecticut College in the summer of 2011, and has transformed the program into becoming a consistent threat on the national stage. Under Coach Riker's direction, the Camels have made three NCAA tournament appearances in 2014, 16, and 17. Coach Riker's 2014 squad made history by capturing the school's first NESCAC championship in a program record 16 wins. He received NESCAC and NSCAA New England Region Coach of the Year honors as well. The 2014 and 16 teams made it as far as the second round of the NCAA tournament, which includes wins over Swarthmore in 2014 and advancing past Scranton on PKs in 2016. Prior to his arrival at Connecticut College, Coach Riker compiled an impressive 108, 51, and 25 record as the head coach at Wittenberg. He led Wittenberg to four consecutive league crowns and four NCAA tournaments to go along with the league championships. The Tigers also climbed as high as number eight in the NSCAA national poll and was consistently ranked among the top 25 teams in the nation. Coach Riker is a native of Block Island, Rhode Island, and he earned his bachelor's degree in history at Springfield College in 92 and a master's of education from the State University of New York at New Paltz. Thanks Coach Riker for being with us this morning. Next up, we have Ruben Burke. Ruben's in his third year on the sidelines, second as the head coach of Connecticut College men's soccer program. He came to the institution after spending one year at Newbury College, two years at the College of Holy Cross, and two years at Alfred University. In his first season as collegiate head coach in 2019, Coach Burke led men's soccer program at Connecticut College to its most successful postseason run in school history. With postseason victories in the NCAA tournament over Catholic, then number three John Hopkins and Swarthmore, leading the team to an Elite Eight appearance. In January of 21, 2021, senior goalkeeper AJ Marcucci, class of 21, became the first ever con athlete to be drafted into Major League Soccer. Marcucci was selected by the New York Red Bulls in the third round of the 2021 MLS Super Draft. 
as a player, Burke, Coach Burke was a four-year student athlete at Hobart College in both 2009 and 11. Hobart finished in the top 25 of the Division III national rankings and made appearances in the NCAA Division III national tournament. In 2009, Coach Burke helped Hobart win the Liberty League Conference Championship. A native of Westford, Massachusetts, Coach Burke graduated from Hobart in 2013 with a bachelor's degree in anthropology slash sociology and religious studies. He then got his master's in business administration from Alfred University in 2015. Coach Burke, thanks for being with us this morning. And last off, but not least, we have Annalise Rios, class of 08. She's in her fifth season as Connecticut College women's soccer assistant and is responsible for assisting head coach Norm Riker with all aspects of the program. Her efforts have helped lead two Camel teams to the NCAA tournament in 2016 and 17. Rios, a former coach Rios, a former member of the Bolivian women's national soccer team was recently elevated to head strength and conditioning Coach, which she works directly with Camel athletes for 12 varsity sports and has helped create our new varsity weight room. Her responsibilities have increased to including supporting men's and women's basketball, men's and women's ice hockey, men's and women's tennis, men's soccer, women's lacrosse, women's rowing, field hockey, and volleyball. Annalise has also been involved with the Southeast Soccer Club as a head coach, assistant coach, and fitness group coach since September 2016. And she has most recently been named the head strength and conditioning coach for the Connecticut Sun of the WNBA beginning in 2020. A native of Bolivia, Coach Rios graduated from Connecticut College in 2008 and was a member of the Camels women's soccer and track and field program. She is also a national strength and conditioning association certified strength and conditioning specialist a National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer and an EXOS performance specialist um, holding license F and E as well as CPR and first aid certification. So Coach Rios, thanks for being with us as well this morning. Um, I'd like to, to throw this question out to start to all the coaches. Um, and I think each program's a little different, so you can all kind of jump in here. But I was curious, what does a day in the life of a student athlete look like in season and out of season for your particular programs? Uh, I'll start it off. Um, thanks, Joe, for, for setting us up with this. And welcome to everybody who's joining the call. Um, I think each program is a little bit different. Um, the way I like to think of it is um, uh, we're all here and we have the, the traditional college student experience with major bonuses. Um, we um, traditionally practice four days a week um, and play once or twice a week for each sport. Um, so when we practice, um, can change a little bit depending on the program and how long we practice can change a little bit depending on the program, but we're getting after it um, four days a week minimum uh, practice wise and I would say two lifts and video sessions um, for each program is pretty standard. Um, so. Thank you, Coach Steele. Any other coaches like to to come I'll, I'll just go at it from a different perspective i think with um our, our people who are joining the, the call a lot of these are, are obviously student athletes <clears throat> that are trying or high school student athletes you know in high school you're in class all day um you you know you've kind of up at, at 6 a.m and you're you know doing you're just getting run through the the, the whole schedule of, of a high school um curriculum where at, at college you know, you have a much, you have a lot more time in your work day to get studies done, to, to have a, actually have a, a campus job. You know, you, you might only have two classes on a Monday and a Friday or Monday and a Wednesday, and you might only have two other ones on a, on a Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and so you're managed, if you can manage your work day, um, when we call that kind of the eight to four day to be able to then jump into your team's um, session um, and or weights or training, whatever it might be, it's a pretty really a uh, doable um, schedule. Um, it takes some managing and it takes some discipline. 
Um, but I, I think that it's hard to picture what college is like when you're stuck in a high school um, academic setting. It's much different when you get to college. Thank you. The other, the other thing I think um, what Kristen said is it exactly what applies to men's soccer um, for practices and in, in a couple of lifts during the week, if this makes any sense, but there's no, there's typical weeks, but maybe not typical days uh, because each day is a little bit different. Um, but, um, you know, your, your Mondays might be the same week after week, but Mondays are different than Tuesdays. And it, it really all depends on your class schedule and um, extracurriculars and job on campus. But uh, um, yeah, I think uh, in terms of soccer, normally practice is in the afternoon. So you have your classes, um, group projects, extracurriculars, and then uh, practice in the afternoon, which is good to look forward to. So, Thank you, Ruben. <clears throat> Coach Rios, I want to frame this question to you. You work with as many student athletes as anyone on campus and you know, building off of what a typical day or week would look like, what does it look like for our student athletes in terms of weight training and what they do with you on a weekly basis, let's say in season? Um, so in season, we, like the coaches mentioned, um, I usually meet with, with teams twice a week. Uh, so we do two lifts um, every week. And again, that's in the typical week. Sometimes um, one of those lifts may be, look more like a little recovery lift um, or a mobility lift uh, where we focus on kind of um, recovering from um, a hard game that they just had over the weekend. Uh, but typically it's um, two lifts during the season uh, focused on strength maintenance, focus on mobility, focus on injury prevention. Um, and in terms of schedule, um, that's where it becomes interesting because um, Practices usually happen at a certain time, and then my job is to to make sure that I can meet with smaller groups of athletes because I usually meet two groups per team, um, and meet with smaller groups of athletes throughout the day. So sometimes I have lifts at 7 a.m. Sometimes I have lifts at 7 p.m. Um, so it all depends on schedules, availability, um, and kind of working around practice schedules and, and um, class schedules too. Thanks, Coach Rios. So <clears throat> a typical day for a student athlete or a typical week, um, most students are taking four courses, which is um, ends up being about 16 credits. Some students have jobs on campus. They're involved with athletics, obviously, and they're balancing a lot of things. So to kind of build off what a typical day or week would look like, how do con student athletes balance school athletics and kind of having a social life at con and being able to get the best of, of all aspects at Connecticut College? So I would say A, it's not easy and B, it's totally doable. Um, and, and I think that that is the, one of the greatest things about going to a school like Connecticut college, right? Um, there are many things that people, students have come here, um, already, uh, with a long list of things that have been part of their lives. And, and then there's also a long list of things that people think they might want to be part of their lives in the future. And this is a great place to start seeing how some of those things can work together. Um, you can be a, um, a student that takes part in a lot of activities on campus, and you can be a student who takes part in a few that are super important to you. Um, what we've found, or I've found over the years, is that uh, people who try to put everything in something has to give. You can't do 100% of everything, but you can do 100% of a few really important activities. But at a place like Connecticut College, you get a chance to find out what those are. Thanks, Coach Steele. Any other coaches like to comment on that one? 
I'll, I'll say this. Uh, you know, you, you, as, you, as you're going through the process to identify what type of school, size school, location of school is important to you, um, you know, I, you get to a point where, you know, Connecticut College and schools like ours, you know, they stand out for you. They stand out for you. Um, and in our case, um, because you have to be a good student to, to even approach the, the admissions building at Connecticut College. You have to have your kind of, you have to be organized and, and disciplined before you get here to be able to get in. Um, and then, then at the end of the day, um, I, I really do believe that it, it is kind of the, the sport and or the, the team that becomes a major factor in, in your decision to come to Connecticut College. And, and from that, obviously academics are first, but, but your sport um, that you're choosing is a pretty important factor to what you're doing. Um, now, there are other areas in college that you can go and explore, um, but, you know, my feeling is, you know, you, you basically are, are saying, I want to get a great education and I want to play one of the best programs in the country for Division III. Um, and that takes discipline, time, and, and effort. Um, now, it's not to say that you can't be a leader socially on campus as well, but like Coach Steele said, you can't, you have to, you're going to have to pick and choose. Um, but the opportunity is there. And I think the most ex successful players that we've had, their professors um, don't even know that they're soccer players sometimes because they're that disciplined, they're, they're, they're that organized. Um, and, you know, I don't, sometimes, you know, um, I think that that's a, a great statement to kind of like the balance that you can have and the success that you can have. You, you can do all three, social, school, and sport, but, you know, you have to, you have to be disciplined and organized. And again, you're not gonna be able to hit every button. You're gonna to have to pick two or three or four things that you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, I would, I, I would quickly echo that um, in my three years here, I, I genuinely feel like Connecticut College student athletes are not perfect, but masters of time management. Um, you know, after four years, you'll be really good at, um, prioritizing what you have going on in your day and, and making sure that everything fits in. Um, you know, for Connecticut College students, academics and in, in getting a quality education is important. So if you know you have practice at four in the afternoon, um, how you balance both is making sure you get your work done before you go to practice. That way you're not up till midnight or, or 1 a.m. And I think you know, that's a skill in itself that Connecticut College kids um, are, are able to master is, um, you know, prioritizing what they have and, and making sure that uh, they get everything done that they need to. Yep. Being disciplined and good time management skills are definitely something as a, as a student athlete here at Con that, that I found to be two of the most, you know, important traits that you could have to be successful here at Con because, you really can do do a lot of different things. Um, and with the going off of the balance with school and um, the academics and athletics piece, what kind of resources are available to support um, student athletes? You know, maybe the resource um, academic resource center, faculty advisors, um, strength and conditioning coaches, mental and to also help with students um, mental health and just improving, you know, all types of different skills that go involved with making a successful um, student athlete at Con. If any of you coaches would like to speak on some resources available to some of your athletes that they take advantage of. I'll, I'll start quickly. Um, Noel Garrett in the, in the arc of the Academic Resource Center is just an absolute, um, you know, he, he an absolute pioneer of, of just basically helping people um, on our campus, but supporting almost every department that he possibly can. The guy is, he's a superhero. So you already have um, an amazing person that is, is there to kind of understand how to help you through that academic piece. Um, and then again, I think actually, I think the sport just helps because it, it, it prioritizes your, your, um, your schedule. I mean, you have to start to kind of, you have to be organized right away because like Ruben was saying, you have to be the master of, of kind of organizing that day-to-day that -day stuff. But um, we, we are also 
hand in hand with student life. So student life and athletics were in the same department. We are, we're overseen by the student life division. And I think that that has an amazing um, outreach to, to um, residential life, to counseling, to the health services. And I, I think that these are things that you, a lot of play, people don't understand why athletics gets placed in certain places. But when we talk about the, the entire person, um, I think Connecticut College does an incredible job of, of, of identifying what are important for our student athletes. Um, and that is, we understand food, residential, academic, social, club, um, and we pull that all together um, to really create, I think, a really healthy environment for our student athletes. I say this to my, my recruits, I say this to my players, uh, I'm a professor coach. Uh, so I actually teach, I'm in a classroom, um, I, you know, I, I'm on campus, I, I run into players um, on, you know, in my street clothes, I run into different faculty members all the time, which creates this bond in the community. And from that, it's easy for us to understand because I'm a professor coach to understand the student athlete. Thanks, Norm. I, I would like to add too, um, along with all of that, um, as the strength and conditioning um, department, we kind of um, do a lot of work with the athletic training department too, um, kind of as a sports performance team. Um, but more importantly, I think as as an athlete on campus, like I, I like to focus on the athlete as a whole, um, and that includes mental health as well. Um, so it's just like we exercise our, our body every single day, and we work hard and we train, and we try to get better. Um, the same thing goes for, for mental health, and we almost have to like do our mental health exercises, um, kind of check in with ourselves, do what works for you. Uh, prioritize that prioritize um, the things that you are involved in on campus so then you're not falling behind in something that is important to you and again in terms of, of mental health like there are a lot of um, options uh, available on campus um, I'm also the advisor for a um, an organization on campus called the hidden opponent and they have weekly meetings and have um, uh, panel discussions and and just open discussions about athletes and mental health. Um, and so again, having all those resources available and people that you can talk to are, are super important. Thank you, Annalise. Joe, I think it needs to be noted that uh, Annalise uh, is also a superhero <laughs> um, yeah. and that um, I don't, I've, not, I've been doing this for well in the, um, almost 30 years. And I, I don't know a person that has been able to say to an athlete, I'm going to have you lift more weights. I'm going to have you do things you don't want to do. And I'm going to have you sprint around. And they all smile. Absolutely. Um, it, it's pretty amazing. It's an amazing skill. Um, so we have Annalise too. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I know um, firsthand the impact that she's had on on all of our um, student athletes, and it's it really is incredible. Um, so going uh, just trying to answer as many questions as possible. And, and a lot of you um, have submitted a really good questions beforehand. But someone was asking about um, particular majors and if certain majors conflict with athletics. And I think pretty much every every team on campus has student athletes that are in a wide variety of majors. And that's, you know, the great thing about Connecticut College is you really can take a couple things and really run with it. So, you know, whatever major or whatever you're interested in studying in or being a part of, you can absolutely do that and be involved with athletics as well. So I think, you know, that's the great thing about being at a liberal arts school and a school like Connecticut College where you, you really can take advantage of what your interests are. Um, but moving on to the next point, the question I want to pose to you coaches is what type of character, work ethic, and mentality does it take to be a successful camel from your experience working with student athletes here at Con? I'll jump in before Coach Riker takes this question because this is his favorite question. Yeah. Um, so I think that um, from my experience at Connecticut College, uh, the people who end up being the most successful here 
really want the challenge. Um, they want to play in the best Division Three conference in the country against the best opponents in the country. Um, and they want to do it all while getting the best education that they can. Um, and and uh, it's something that you have to really want. And I will say that over the years, I have had uh, many people who have been able to, um, you know, reach up to that goal, pull themselves up, pull others up with them. But there have certainly been many people who have um, sat in my office and have told me that was something that they wanted. Um, and I would say that they told me that's what they wanted, um, but they weren't always willing to do that work once they got here. So what I would say is you have to know what you're actually in, in for um, and ask really good questions so that you really understand what that means. Thanks, Coach. Coach Riker, should we go to you next? I don't know. Ruben, you want to start or on the lease? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll quickly. Um, I think I think what takes uh, to be a successful camel is is a team player because this is a this is a special community. Uh, it's a tight knit community. Um, the professors have close relationships with the students. The the coaches have close relationships with the players. Um, you know, everyone's invested into each other's lives and people that are selfish or only here for their own interest, um, you know, it, it typically, it typically sours the environment. And uh, I think people that um, want, want to be here um, for the right reasons and people that want to make the community and, and campus uh, a more enjoyable place or, or people that, um, you know, or, or who, who we're looking for and, and what it takes to be a camel. The, the other thing that I'd say too is just simply to echo what Kristen is saying, um, I think you can call it different things. I call it um, tenacity. Um, there's a professional soccer coach called Arsene Wenger, who used to coach at Arsenal, and he said, what tenacity is having a long-term goal and every day not wavering from that goal. So, you know, if, if you have 6.30 lifting with Annalise and, and you had a final exam yesterday, or if we lost to Middlebury in double overtime and we have a recovery session tomorrow morning, you know, what, what we look for is guys that are and, and gals that are tenacious, you know, um, that want to be part of the team's long-term success, help the team moving forward and have the dedication and commitment to each day, um, you know, pulling their weight and, and making the team better, so. Well said, thank you, Coach Burke. Coach Riker? Or, or Rios, because I think Annalise works with all the teams, so she has a great spin on this. Absolutely. So I was, I was going to say, um, I think one of the things we, we always talk about um, is attitude and effort. And those are the things that you can control um, whatever it is you're doing during that day. So if it's, if you're setting out a, a block um, of study time, then put it, put all your attitude and effort into that, that block. Um, if you're coming down into the dune with me to work out in the weight room, um, then it's all about that, that attitude and effort and kind of um, being in the present moment and, um, and working towards your, uh, both your individual goals um, as an athlete, um, but also your team goals um, as a team player. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, as seeing, being able to work with, with so many different teams, I love the, the, the different combination of personalities and in, in within each team and I can honestly say that every single team I work with like I just love being in the weight room with them because um everyone's bringing their their full attitude and full effort and um and just 
getting getting ready for for every single day and, and for like Ruben said for that long term goal as a team. Thanks, Coach. Control what you can control. Go ahead, Coach. Right. Yeah. Well, and and that is that's that's so start right there. Control what you can control, and that is and that is being present. So that is we talk about this a lot. We have um, in, our, in our program with Annalise, with women's soccer, we have a, um, a saying that can clear you or, or bring you to present. We have a visual that can bring you to present. Uh, we have little meditation and breathing tricks to bring you to present, but you have to be present. And to Ruben's point, um, if you're distracted by the, the defeat or the setback, um, then you can't get to that long-term goal. Um, you can't, you know, and you need to stay focused. So I always say this, it's hard to be a camel. It's hard to be a camel because parents, parents out there understand that your son and daughter are gonna have challenges. They're gonna have setbacks, they're gonna have failures. And if you can't embrace those failures with us, then it'll be tough, okay? Student athletes that are looking here, you don't, if you don't struggle, you don't grow. Failure is, is, you know, there's no, there's no success like failure. Okay. Um, and, but trust me, it is our greatest learning tool that we have. And if you want to, like coach Steele says, play in the best conference in the country and you want to play against the best teams in the country and you want to be on the best program that we have in the to, to, to compete for that place in the country you better expect some failures some challenges and some set, and some setbacks and if you're distracted by those setbacks okay we're only going to be so successful you have to be mentally tough you have to be team first driven you have to be able to be present and you have to bring your attitude your energy and your effort to everything that we do everything the film session the team meal the team meeting okay the study block whatever it might be OK, you've got to put yourself out there and you got to put your team first and you have to get uncomfortable putting your team first. And when you do that, we get success. And that's why it's hard to be a camel. It's easy to lose a game. Just go distracted and be unfocused and walk on the field. You're done. It's hard to win. And that's why it's hard to be a camel, because we win. Thanks, Coach Riker. I think going off of this, I'd like to there's a good question in the chat um, this morning about what are the core values of your program? And I think that, you know, speaking for men's ice hockey, we have a couple pillars, but, you know, two of them that stick with me would be family first and commitment. And I think that, you know, those are, those are some of the values that we really cherish as men's ice hockey program and try to, to build our team around. And, you know, I wasn't sure if any of you coaches wanted to talk about um, any core values or particular pillars that, that you try to stick to or how you run your programs. I mean, I'll, I'll throw out that two of ours are team first, which coach Riker already brought up and then grit, which is very similar to the definition that coach Burke gave for tenacity. Um, I think that those are things that stand out for us and we talk about as a team all the time. Thanks coach. For, for men's soccer, um, I, ha I have, I do an exercise in the off season every year where I have the team get together and it's not influenced by the coaching staff, but, but the players choose the values based on the returners and their past experiences and, and what, you know, what they want to identify with or what they want to be moving forward. And in, in this off season, we chose team first, blue collar, confident and disciplined. So we, we have four, we have four core values. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so for women's soccer, and again, every, every program is gonna have something similar. Um, and, you know, we, we talk about this as a staff a lot, you know, we, we, uh, we share a couple of common hallways and we, and we always are going back and forth, um, sharing ideas with each other and, and talking about, you know, how to get our teams, you know, you know, hitting on all cylinders. So we have um, our, our vehicle that propels us forward is the camel train. Um, and we have four wheels on the camel train that are basically our, our, our the foundation or the pillars of our, of our culture. 
Um, but the saying, I think, that will encapsulate what we deal with the most, I think, is, is fight family focus. Um, as an SCAC school, no one's going to hand you anything. OK, no, there's no there's there's no, there's never going to be an easy day in an SCAC. It's just that you have to fight for everything. You have to fight for every ball, every inch, whatever, whatever it is, it's going to get you that that one percent um, marginal gain you've got to fight for. So back to Coach Steele of, of grit, tenacity with Coach Burke, um, that fight is, is vital. Um, family, not only are, you know, our own immediate families, um, you know, um, I, but I think obviously the, the, the family that we create in the team, in the culture, in that, in that circle that we create, we always say keep the circle tight. Um, and we really need to create um, that family in a team room. And that is ongoing, everyday focus. That, that is something that you cannot take your eyes off for a second. Um, so that family is vital. And then it's the focus. Again, you play in a, you, we talk about wanting to play for, in the best league in the country. And, you know, you have to stay focused because, you know, you can play nearly perfect in, in our sport, Coach Burke and, and, or in, and Annalise with, with women's soccer. And I would say hockey is pretty much the same. You can play nearly perfect and, be, and, and lose 1-0. No. Um, and you can play nearly perfect four games and be 0-4. And if you lose your focus, you're going to be 0-5 pretty quick. You've got to stay disciplined because you're playing the best teams in the country week in and week out. So that fight family focus is vital to um, um, our day-to-day -day, um, culture. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Riker. Um, if I could add to that, um, and I kind of hit on this before, but in the weight room, um, we have a, a saying, and it's do the work, get results. So every every day that you put in the work, um, whether it's a small thing, whether it's focusing on, on being a little bit more mobile that day um, or being a little bit more flexible um, or putting in the work, like in the weight room, um, you're going to see some sort of change. Um, and that's that's where that daily that daily work goes in that um, constant uh, like striving towards your goal. Um, so that kind of encompasses everything. But then the the three other things that I always mention are preparation, attitude, and effort. Attitude and effort I talked about before. How you have to be present, have you put your effort in in order to to see the results. But then my job as a strength coach is to prepare you for your for your your sport. Um, and then your job as an athlete is to do do that work and be prepared. So then that when it comes to competition, when it comes to the setback, when it comes to an injury, you're prepared, you're there, you have a long-term goal and you can put all your attitude and effort into succeeding. Thank you, Coach Rios. <clears throat> all right, so we're, we've been getting a lot of questions about um, different internship opportunities as well as study abroad opportunities within some of your programs. I know for winter sports and hockey in particular, we've had certain student athletes that have taken uh, study abroad opportunities during the summer instead of during the year as winter sports kind of conflict with both the fall and spring semesters. But maybe one of the um, other coaches would like to speak about some of the internship as well as study abroad opportunities while still being a part of, of your program as well. Uh, I'll, I'll start really quick. First of all, the career center here is, is excellent. Um, they've, they've just, it's basically the first thing you see when you, when you drive on a campus, which I think, um, you know, we don't want to rush you through this process, but the idea that you come here is, is to get that career and to get that the four years here will, will, will help the next 40 and beyond. So we have an incredible staff in the career services that will help the internships during the summertime um, and in other times of the year. Um, I'll just quickly speak on the, on the, um, on the, this, the uh, semester away or junior year abroad, I call it JYA. Um, I, I always get discouraged when I hear students say that I went to this other school and they say that I couldn't travel. And I'm like, wow, then th that, that's really sad that, 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 that they're limiting you to that experience. Um, I feel that this junior year abroad, if you want to take it, it's why you come to Connecticut College. It's why you play here. It's why you play for us. Um, because I think every one of our coaches um, will want you to have that experience. And by the time that you're, that's happening, you're well immersed in our cultures and, and, and understanding what it takes to be a, a successful student athlete for us. So go to the world. And I always say, send me a postcard. Um, 
you know, I, I think it's an incredible experience that we that we encourage our students to, to look into. Thanks, Coach Riker. Um, all right. So next next question I'd like to ask is, how would alums describe their experience here playing for for your program and just you know the time that they've had at Connecticut College? Yeah. So one of the things. Um, that we've been lucky enough to do this year is a number of um, alumni panels, um, some in conjunction with our alumni office, where we've been able to bring uh, five to six alums uh, back on Zoom to talk with our student athletes. And um, I think it's been really great for our student athletes to have to see what some of our alums to the places where some of our alums have gotten to. Um, I think it's a really neat experience to see the people that were sitting in exactly their seats, um, see what they've done out in the world. Um, like our alums themselves, obviously, if you put a group of them together, they're going to, they are going to uh, talk about all the great experiences they had on campus and share these little inside jokes. Um, and, and I would say for me, what's really neat is to see them sharing those experiences and those little inside um, stories across the 20 years of alums that we have. Like there's a neat synergy and a neat connection that all of them have. Um, so they're very proud of, of what they built here, the legacy that they've left and, and the really, really great relationships that they have both uh, with each other as alums, but with the faculty and staff on campus, even to this day. Um, but they're going to talk about the relationships most, most often. Thanks coach. Anyone else like to chime in? Yeah, I think one, one of the great things about Connecticut college, you know, one of the, one of the standout things is, um, is the alumni community and, and there is a lot of pride uh, and people, you know, people are really proud to have gone to Connecticut College. So I'm sure this is the same for every sport, but on behalf of men's soccer, you know, there's always alumni that are reaching out and eager to connect and help our current players. Um, just like Kristen said, typically once a semester, um, we do a we do a alumni panel where there's five or six alumni that address the team and, and they talk about their experience at con, you know, how they've navigated their career and, and where they're at now and some of the steps that they've taken. But it's also a great uh, networking event for our players. And after four years of doing alumni panels, you'll have 35, 40, 45 alumni that um, you're well connected to it. A real quick story. We have a current senior, Quentin Benedetto, from the alumni panel. He connected with an alumni here, Jim Brooks, and um, Quentin wants to go into sports marketing. Jim connected Quentin with uh, another Connecticut College alumni who didn't play soccer, but Jim was friends with him, and uh, Quentin got an interview uh, in a sports marketing company from him. So I think the thing to take away is that um, Connecticut College alumni are, are really eager to give back and help student athletes. And even if they can't directly help them, um, you know, they, they, they want to connect them with someone else who can, so. Thanks, Ruben. Yeah, absolutely. There's countless, countless alums I know who have helped current and former men's ice hockey players as well. And I think the the bond and the, the connections through our alumni group is, is a reason to, to go to a school like Connecticut College. Um, changing pages a little bit, um, in January of 2021, the Connecticut College coaches um, participated in the 21 day allyship program to help promote diversity, equity, and inclusion within our programs and our community. And I pose this question to you all, how have you started to implement what you have learned into your programs with your particular teams? Uh, I'll, I'll start. I mean, I just think that um, over the last year 
or or you know we we've been you know not that it's uncomfortable but i think we have to we have conversations in our team about about our country about our society about our own team about um uh, you know about the world around us because um you know we, you know we it's you know it's what we do here it's it's just um the ally thing for me though joe to answer that you know is is just i i think i would think that i'm a pretty free thinking open person but here i am you know i'm in my 50s and and um and i i'm i'm a white male and here i am and i got to look myself and say wow i didn't really even think of that and to be able to kind of have the ally program that we took and really dove deep into open up my world to um ha- words i say things i do um privilege that i have that i was not even aware of has been has been in, really um important for me in, in my growth and to listen to my players um and hear them um and and i think is it's what it's it's kind of opened that up too so I might be the oldest member of our team and I might be the head coach of our team, but I'm, I'm learning every day. Um, and, and my players make me better um, because we have these open conversations and because we're always willing to learn. Um, and I, and I feel that that's kind of, um, I think that that encompasses our whole department and kind of the, the staff that we have and, and the student athletes that we attract. Um, and I'm really proud to be a camel and I'm proud to be a camel because I've been humbled um as a camel too and and humbled through that experience and and grown immensely through listening to my players thanks coach Riker. i think that um you know as coaches and staff we we certainly don't have all the answers but we've we've seen a, a group of coaches that are willing to to learn and work together coach Steele, did you have something that you wanted to add as well yeah i would just say that the 21 day allyship program help give us a common language um, and some common footing that we could have these better conversations um, or sometimes not better conversations, um, but just conversations that, that are that those uncomfortable ones. And I would encourage people, you know, look, maybe look up what the 21 day allyship program is and see if maybe you can, um, uh, either get involved with a program like that or another similar program to maybe give you a common language with some of the people that you're around a lot. Cause I think it, it has been beneficial for us as a group and will definitely serve our student athletes moving forward. Thanks coach Steele. All right. So another question's come in on um, whether student athletes live together and when they can potentially move off campus. Um, it's certainly uh, a question that's still a little bit up in the air. I think this year there was students living off campus, um, more upper class students. And I think that um, things are still a little bit up in the air on housing for next year. A lot of student athletes do live together with teammates. You, you have a choice on who you live with, especially after your first year. Um, they've, the school has started to group some student athletes together even in their first year. Um, but yeah, after, after your freshman year, there are a lot of opportunities to live with student athletes or to live with other friends that you may have made um, throughout your experience and time at Con. And I'd like to um, end off on this question um, and pose it to each of you all and your different experiences at Con. But what makes Khan a special place to you all and some of your experience here at Khan? Just what, what makes it stand out? Why is this Connecticut College such a special place to you and a spot that these potential student athletes should, should look at? I, I can start with that one. Um, as, as an alum um, of Connecticut College, I mean, I, I was born and raised in, in Bolivia, and I chose Connecticut College because of um, the community, uh, the honor code, um, just having those open discussions and having the, the advisory board and everything. Um, but a lot of it comes down to the community. I mean, I, I graduated in 2008. Um, I'm now working at 
college that I once attended. And it's amazing. Like there are still people who um, worked at the college while I was in college, um, ranging from coaches to um, people in, in different offices or maybe even like dining services. Um, yesterday I reconnected with someone who who I hadn't seen um, since I went to college, um, part of the dining staff. And it was the best feeling to know that so many years later, like there's still that strong sense of community, that strong sense of it uh, doesn't matter whether you're you're like attending or you're working at Connecticut College. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a first year or a, a senior. Like there is a strong community that is felt throughout. Um, so that is that is what I love about it. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Rios. That was excellent. Ruben? Uh, yeah. For for me, I I think at a, I've worked at four or five different schools. For me, Connecticut College is, is incredibly unique. I guess I would boil it down to a couple of things. The first thing that is really unique is, is the quality of well-rounded experience that you get here. I mean, Khan is a top 50 liberal arts school in the country you're, you're getting a phenomenal education um, challenging curriculum personalized education and at the same time I, especially these four programs here men's and women's hockey men's and women's soccer you're you're playing on elite athletic programs you know programs that are, are top of division three athletic programs so there's not I could be wrong, but I, I would guess that there's not too many schools out there that can offer top 50 academics, top 50 athletics um, on a on a on an every year basis. Um, for me, another another really unique thing, similar to Annalise, is you know, I've I've never worked at a school where the faculty, the staff, uh, the the students have so much pride in being here. You know. People, people really love being at Connecticut College. And, you know, I think that shapes you as a young adult for the rest of your life, being an environment where people are, are, are proud to wear the jersey. Um, you know, they bleed blue. Um, you know, Connecticut College, um, people feel very fortunate and privileged to go to. And it's, uh, it's not a school where people are, are looking to leave. Um, and, and for me, the, the last thing that makes Connecticut College really unique, and we've already touched on a little bit, is, is the career services. Um, we, have, uh, we have a program in place where every student can qualify for $3,000 um, to use towards job shadowing, internship experience, or additional summer school classes. Uh, we have a boy on our team, MT Tashuma, uh, this past summer did um, uh, specific business classes at Dartmouth over the summer. He got it completely paid for through the career service department. Um, and I think uh, to coach Norm's point, not looking too far down the road, but the, you know, one of the purposes of college is, is to improve the quality of your life for the next 40 years while well, getting real world experience, having $3,000, which you can use to improve your resume, to get you a kickstart in whatever industry you wanna pursue that. I mean, that's really, really unique and something Khan does a really good job with, so. Thank you, Coach Burke. Coach Steeler Riker. Kristen, you wanna go? Sure. Um, so since, since I'm the one with the, the longest tenure here, right, I, I came to Connecticut College initially um, from Niagara University in Buffalo, and I came here specifically to get closer to, I'm from Massachusetts, so to get closer to home. Um, you don't stay somewhere for that long just to be closer to home. Um, so like when I, when I talked with people about our school and, um, and like why people come and why people stay and why it leaves a lasting impression, 
Um, definitely the career services program is one of the highlights. Um, but I talk to them also about the, the connections that you end up with, with professors. Um, I kind of, I always make a joke um, that, you know, if you happen to hit the crossbar in the last 30 seconds of the game, you're probably going to hear about it in chemistry class. Right. And, um, and that, that's an important thing that you have these people in your corner all the time um, who are at, they're at your games and they care about what happens. Um, so, uh, you know, that you get a little good natured ribbing in class. Um, like that's an awesome thing in my opinion, because it shows that people are aware of what's going on. You're more than just a number. Um, and they really, really want to be part of the world that you're living in. Um, and so relationships and community are, are the reason people become attached. Like you come for the education, you come for the good um, competition, but you get attached because of the relationships that you form with people on campus. So, Thanks, Coach Steele. Coach Riker? Well, um, moved by the first three statements from our from our coaching staff i almost forgot what the question is but um you know uh kristen um we all, we're always competing internally as, as a staff so i'm not I'm, this is not really a competition question but but i i actually arrived on campus at nine or eight or nine ten years old um i grew up on block island the, the first soccer camp i ever went to was at connecticut college the first moment that 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 when you're when you're a kid and you and you you have that that athletic moment that like kind of sparks you i had it on the green i scored a goal at camp i'll always remember it it, it, it that twinge that you get and it was on freeman green um and i'm here now um it's kind of hard to believe but you know i was i was a boy and went to camp here and and here i am now directing the camp that i went to um that said i married a camel um, so my wife, um, is, 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 you know, is, is an alum, um, class of 89. Her mother is class of 59 and also a camel. Um, so I feel like I'm, even though I'm not an alum, I feel like I am. Um, we thought we were going to have a third generation. Uh, my daughter, Isabel plays soccer uh, and she looked at con, but, uh, she chose against it. She didn't like the coach. Um, and, uh, but, um, anyway, that's another story for another day. Um, I just feel, you know, and, and, and you mentioned it earlier, Joe, um, you know, when I was out of Wittenberg, we, we had a lot of really good things going. Um, I, you know, was, was, we were hitting all cylinders with that program. Connecticut college was, was my, you know, was that dream job for me. Um, again, full circle of my entire kind of boyhood to career to family coming back to be able to coach on the green, um, in the NESCAC with an incredible, you know, at an incredible institution. Um, Connecticut College is, is everything that, that the three coaches before me said, but I will also say this. Um, I love its location um, between, you know, obviously Boston and New York, the, um, the Amtrak the, to have to be able to jump on um, 95 and get somewhere pretty quickly. The, the, the location's ideal, but when you're able to practice and have water views wherever you practice, it's remarkable. Um, I've traveled the country, I've traveled the world. When you stand on the steps of Blaustein and look out at the green down at Long Island Sound, there's not a better view. There is not a better view. Um, and to be in a place that has the community that we have, that has the athletic reputation and, and commitment and, and competition that we have, to have the staff of camel coaches that we have, um, this is, this is an incredible place to be. Um, it's a dream job for me, and I'm just honored to be a camel. Thanks, Coach Riker. I think, you know, there's no doubt that the connections and the people that you meet at Connecticut College is, is something that's really stuck with me and a lot of the panelists and coaches here. But I um, wanted to thank all the, all the coaches for your time this morning and to the student um, perspective student athletes who have joined us. There will be an 11.30 admission session, admissions and financial aid. There's a separate Zoom link that you were emailed. 
Um, so you'll have to click on that and that'll take you to the 1130 session, which will be starting momentarily. Thank you all again for joining us and enjoy the future sessions. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, coaches. Thank you, Joe. Have a great day.